welcome back to the Ovens Garage. Today I'm going to do an update video on the coolant filter. So this is my first coolant filter change. It's been about 15,000 kilometers, maybe about a year and a half since I put the coolant filter system onto this 12 valve Cummins. And as you probably know, the 12 valve Cummins engines and the first and second gen Dodge Rams do not come with a coolant filter. I opted to install one before I put my Webasto system on. Um, as well as after I had flushed my heater core because I was having issues with my heater core clogging up So that was primarily the reason why I installed the coolant filter, but today I'm changing the coolant filter I'm gonna take it off put the new filter on and I'm gonna cut open the old filter and I'll show you just how dirty the old filter is um, In this system and the coolant isn't that old or dirty. I did swap it once after I bought this truck about three Maybe four years ago. So here's the old coolant I'm Just draining it out now it's not terrible, but it's not great either. I just tested the freezing point of the coolant using this tester, and it was around like minus, uh, minus 32 or minus 33 or something. So I'm gonna change out the coolant with hopes of getting my freezing point lower. So I live in Winnipeg here, and sometimes the cold snaps can get down to uh, minus 40 degrees Celsius, and I wanna make sure that my uh, coolant in the engine is up to par because it's a fight in this winter here, just making sure that the truck runs properly. All right, so we're in the engine bay. You can see where I installed the coolant filter here again. I put a shut off valve on each side, so that way I can shut it off, pull the filter off, and change it easily without having to drain the uh, radiator. But I'm draining the coolant anyways because I need to flush it because it's been a while. I'm gonna shut those two valves, pull the old filter off, install the new one, and then I'll cut open the old one and show you what it looks like. All right, here's the old filter and the new filter. See the old filter 410466 and the new one 423935. There's the date, Feb 2023, and there's today's date. So you can see right away, this is all gunk that was in the cooling system. So the fluid flows in uh, through here and then back out the center, if I'm not mistaken. You can see all the gunk, so can't wait to open this up and see what's actually inside. I'll link this in the description box if you want to cut open your filters. I've been finding that it's a super useful tool to cut open filters like these and, ins and inspect visually the filter media itself to see what kind of uh, things are clogging up your system, whether it be the oil or coolant or fuel filters. All right, and this is just peeling the lid off here, cut through it. Look at the top of this filter. This is all sludge that was in the cooling system. All the sludge caught up in the filter. Let's take a look inside. First look. Set this off to the side for a sec. I'll show you at the bottom of the housing itself. I'm gonna drain that out and then I'll show you what's in the bottom of it. Okay, so I just drained out the filter. That's what's in the bottom. Take the uh, bottom of that and the spring out. Yeah, so you can see at the bottom all this sludge again. So, a lot of gunk in there. Let's take a look at the filter. Okay, and first look at the filter here. Just feeling it with my fingers, it almost feels like, like a fine mud. It's just a very fine sort of, over the entire filter, you can see it's just like a very fine sort of silt. So, those that argue that you don't need a coolant filter, well, there's your proof. Unless you've, you know, meticulously maintained your coolant the life of the truck, I'd say you need a you need a filter. Look at how gummed up that is. I can squeeze that. Look at all the stuff that comes out of there. It's like mud. It's not coolant, I'll tell you that. So I'm not sure how much filtering this was doing, you know, once it got clogged up like this, but I might need to even shorten my interval until this cleans right up or do a, a better job at flushing the system. But you can see it's a pretty significant amount of crud in the cooling system. So in my opinion, definitely worth having a coolant filter. This coolant filter doesn't have any additives in it. It's just WF2070, it's just a filter. And you can see right there, there's your proof of why you need a coolant filter in your truck. Most of the time people just run a all vehicle type of antifreeze or coolant um, in these pickup trucks. Uh, and you can, for the most part, get away with it. I've done it for the past 
uh, 10 years that I've owned some of these uh, pickup trucks and I've had no issues or at least so I think but my recent coolant filter change has kind of led me to go down a path of doing a little bit more research before just considering using an all vehicle type of antifreeze and instead using a Cummins recommended uh, type of antifreeze instead. So Cummins has a technical service bulletin that I'll link in the description box below that you can take a read. It outlines their specific recommendations on all of their engines for a coolant or antifreeze to use. It has specific Cummins engine standard uh, standards for types of coolant that they recommend to be used in all of their engines. There's a couple different standards, but there is one standard specifically. It's a CES, uh, I believe it was 14609 or something like that. I'll put it in the description. Uh, but essentially, that engine standard, the Cummins engine standard of antifreeze that they recommend, if you can find a coolant that has that uh, that meets that standard, then it's good to go in any of the Cummins engines. So typically available in my area are the Prestone products, unless you go directly to Cummins to get the Fleet Guard uh, coolant that they sell. But the Prestone is pretty widely available. So I went to my local parts store, asked for the Prestone command line of products. And this is the one uh, Prestone command product that meets the Cummins recommendation that's outlined in their technical service bulletin. So the Cummins standard is CES 14603, so 14603. That's the standard that you want to look for in a type of coolant uh, that you're using on any Cummins engine. This doesn't specifically say it right on the bottle, but if you look on the website for Prestone Command products, uh, you want to look for the Prestone Command nitrate free red bottle. It has the core guard, um, and then it says, gives you all the specifications. It doesn't say it right on this bottle, but on their website, it tells you that it meets the CES 14603. And that's the standard that you want to meet when you're putting in a uh, new coolant into a Cummins engine. So this is a bottle of concentrate. And what you want to run with concentrate is either deionized or distilled water. Uh, prefer deionized if you can, if you can find it. So I'm going to be doing about a 60-40 or 70-30 split between the concentrate and the distilled water because uh, I live in a cold climate here in Winnipeg. Sometimes the cold snaps can get down to minus 40 degrees Celsius, so i got to be careful with the ratio that I'm putting in because even with 50-50, um, right here it says 50-50 is only good down to minus 37 C, and we just hit that the other day, so I uh, want to be careful with what my ratio is. And after, I'll go ahead and test it with the... Uh, the uh, antifreeze tester, which measures the specific gravity and tells you the freezing point of the coolant. So again, Cummins specific in general for first gen, second gen, third gen, fourth gen, I don't even know what gen they're on now Cummins, but uh, look for one that meets the CES 14603 standard. You can get Prestone Command, uh, I believe Fleet Guard makes one and Valvoline, I think they make one as well. Uh, there's a few different products out there, but make sure you meet that CES 14603 standard. And I'll link the Cummins Technical Service Bulletin below. It outlines all the recommendations, including testing, if you wanted to use some of their test strips as well. So right now I'm in the middle of doing a coolant flush in this truck. Again, I was just running the generic antifreeze. Um, what I'm doing now, so I drained the coolant system entirely. Um, I flushed the heater core back and forth a couple times with the hose. Um, and now at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and throw in, I'm just using like a generic rad flush. I'll throw in a bottle of generic rad flush. I'm gonna top up the system with distilled water. I'm gonna go for a drive, make sure the engine gets nice and hot so that way the thermostat opens, gets it through the radiator, gets it through the engine. I'm gonna drain the coolant again, and I'm, then I'm gonna flush the heater core again, then I'm gonna change my coolant filter. And once I'm done changing my coolant filter, then I'll top it up with my Prestone Command and deionized water. Okay, so I just finished doing the rad flush. I ran the truck for about 20 minutes, um, idled it, revved it about 1500 uh, RPMs for 10 minutes or so, got the truck up to temperature, and I decided um, after I just drained the coolant here again, I was gonna change the filter again just to see what was inside of it. Uh, in the bottom of the, in the bottom of the coolant filter, you can actually see a little bit of debris and some casting sand even. Uh, not too bad, but I wanted to see if some of that sludge would come out of here. Um, it's not too bad actually, there's no sludge in here, which is good, but you can see in between all of the pleats, even with doing the rad flush, there was still quite a bit of debris in there. So I think it was a good idea to do 
the filter change, even though I have only had it on there for 15 minutes, just to clean out some of the debris. And now that I have a new filter on there, I'll run it for about 10, 15,000 kilometers. And then I will uh, change it again. We'll see how it is then. But uh, there we go. That shows you right there that doing a flush does knock some gunk loose at least and uh, clean up the system a little bit. I'll do another update video in a year on the next coolant filter swap or about 10,000 kilometers and we'll see what sort of debris we can get out of there. So hopefully this video helped you if you're looking to change the coolant in your Cummins truck. Regardless of the generation that it is, you should make sure that it meets the Cummins engine standard. Then you'll be worry-free for years to come. Thanks for watching and cheers.